certified G. That's me. And a bona fide stunt. That's Jeff. And you can't teach that. Ladies and gentlemen. E. T. A. Excuse the aggravation, but I'm Shane, and the whiskey's working on me. Um, I cannot see the whiskey. The whiskey, I can't even see the whiskey. So, Jeff, what are we talking about today in part two? Um, well, I mean, we've got AJ Styles and um, uh, NJPW talent uh, that is rumored to be signing with WWE soon. We'll kind of look at what they're going to bring to the table and what we hope they can do. Um, of course, more discussion on WWE creative and how. Uh, how up and down stop and start they've been over the last year, four or five years um kind of some thoughts about what we want to see happen at wrestlemania not necessarily what we think is going to happen but what we want to see happen um and of course just more um fumbling bumbling and uh, slurring our words <laughs> that's always the way with it lately isn't it of um and i do have to point out that uh, it's not just aj styles and bullet club that are coming to wbe but it's also Say it with me, Shinsuke Nakamura coming in, who, for my money, is the number one wrestler in the world right now. And I would have a hard time um, arguing with that, except for the fact that I think AJ Styles is the best wrestler in the world right now. Um, I just so, so 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 yeah, I think we can agree that that you know two of the top five wrestlers in the world are coming to WWE in the next month or so. Exactly, and I mean I, AJ Styles has been f phenomenal. Um, and I think uh, what the work he's done with the Bullet Club is some of the best stuff I've seen out of him since probably 2006, 2007 in TNA. Um, he, uh, Finn Balor's going to kick your ass. <laughs> oh, I did say the... No, I didn't. I did not. You did. You did say the Bullet did Club. I, oh, my God. What's wrong with me? And I've been busting you for the last week and a half. <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, Bullet Club stuff. Um, is hopefully coming to uh, coming as well. I just wish they could use the name Bullet Club, but it sounds like Ring of Honor and uh, NJPW are keeping that, especially considering they still have Bullet Club members there. Um, and there's been rumors of it becoming Baylor Club. Uh, I don't know how I want to see that. I don't know if I want to see that. Um, I do and I don't, because I don't want to see Finn Baylor get buried on Raw, but I also don't want to see AJ Styles in NXT. I think AJ uh, Styles only has a year or two left. Um, he's already 38 years old. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot of time left in him, and I think he's a guy that needs to be on a grand stage and be on a grand stage right now. I think he needs to be a guy that comes in and immediately starts pushing for the heavyweight title. AJ you're talking about? Yes, AJ. Okay, I, just, I, just, I, I thought that's what you were talking about, but you also mentioned Bauer in the same sentence as well, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, AJ is one of the top flight talents in the world. There's, There's been some people on a site that I that I look at a lot for wrestling rumors and news, um, Lords of Pain, that where a couple of people are saying that WWE may hold it against him, that it took him so long to sign with them, and that he turned down so many offers from them previously. When, I, Yeah, I got to call bullshit on that. Why are they going to bring him in? If they're just going to do that to him, that makes no sense whatsoever. Why? Look how they push. Look how they push Kevin Owens. Look how they've been treating Samoa Joe, who also had um, ignored overtures from from their previously. Yeah, Samoa Joe's not on the main roster, but he is a big deal in NXT. Um, I think the reason AJ, why they can say that, and the reason why they are saying that, is because you look at what he did to WCW. His whole purpose of bringing in wrestlers like Goldberg and Steiner was to bury them. There was no other reason for them to be um, brought in WWE, and I think Vince McMahon is one of those people that does hold a grudge and holds it forever. And it, it, there is some validity to Gold that, and I hope it doesn't. Happen. Goldberg was Goldberg was treated extremely well. Um, they screwed up his music. There's obviously no question about that. But he went over The Rock. He went over Triple H. He was a world champion for about three months. Um, he did not leave the company very well, but he was not buried by WWE. It wasn't, um, there was one moment, and it was uh, when they, Elimination Chamber, um, when he was supposed to win the title, 
uh, and he ended up being in the elimination chamber and losing. I think that was the turning point, and I don't know if if he had done something that soured Vince, but ever since that that turn, uh, he was not the same guy, and he was ready to be out of the company. They were ready to have him out. Uh, but he won the title after that, didn't he? I think yeah, he won the title like the month after that's that. That's the part that confused me because it, it almost seemed like they were burying him, and then he won the title, and I couldn't tell if that was them just giving it to him just to say, hey, you know what, we recognize this guy had some had some love. Let's see if we can get some of that back. And I think that's I think that I think that actually him saying he saying that he was buried in that match that elimination chamber match might be a little bit of of, of uh, creative thinking on some people's parts. So not necessarily saying you, but if you go back and watch that match, he completely dominated the action of that match. He only lost because Ric Flair stuck triple or snuck Triple H a sledgehammer in there. And I'll have to I mean I mean he I mean I mean he was completely dominated in that match. And I'll have to go back and watch it, but if I do remember right and cuz I mean how long was that? It was a, almost a decade ago. You know, it was uh but if I remember right It was it, a dozen years ago. 2000 yeah. It was SummerSlam 2003. Yeah, you're right. So I mean we're going back a long way. My memory might be a little hazy especially with the amount of alcohol I've had tonight. Um but Well, he, well haze would um tend to mean something besides alcohol. Very good point. Um, regardless, uh, it, the it, my whole, if I remember just thinking back to that time, is that was kind of the turning point was around Elimination Chamber where you didn't see the dominant guy that you had seen not only in WCW, but when he first debuted against The Rock. He just didn't seem like the kind of guy that cared anymore. And you could see it in the stop-start booking that he was having. And, and yeah, he did go on and win the title, and I don't know why, um, because he wasn't being portrayed very well. And people blame Triple H for that. I mean, they blame, they put a lot of blame on it, and there might be some blame to go on Triple H, because Triple H, during that time, he had to be the best in the world. I mean, he came, um, you look at all the people that came in, when the Radicals came in, and Chris Benoit at the time was WCW champion. Triple H beat him. You know, Taz came in around that t time, and he was the ECW champion. Triple H beat him. You know, so there. I mean, there's a lot of people that that talk about Triple H burying talent throughout the year, and but I don't know if so much if that's Triple H is doing or if that's Vince not wanting to put over other people, and that's where I get the fear from that he might do the same thing with AJ Styles, because AJ, if you think about it, and I was thinking about this uh, over a week or so. How many WWF champions have there been that made their name somewhere else? Ric Flair, Seth Rollins. I can't think of another WWF champion that became a household name somewhere else and came to WWE. Um, if you're talking about the actual WWE title, nobody else. But Booker T, Booker T won the world championship. Right. So I guess I guess that'd be a third option, but but even that took a a long time, and he had to change the character two or three times in order to get back to the point where he was over enough to get that championship. Um, I think I think it's clear though from the way that they that they they brought in Styles um, and Gallows together, and that they're working on getting Carl Anderson signed. And that they already have Balor under contract. That this is not going to be the same type of situation. I, I believe they are going to be a dominant faction in WWE. And as I said to you three or four days ago, since Bullet Club was really kind of a modern take on a certain organization that was taking over the wrestling world even down to the same symbol and to uh, dominate, trying to dominate a promotion, I don't understand why they wouldn't just use the name New World Order in WWE since WWE owns the trademark to the NWO since that's really what the Bullet Club would have been if New Japan had owned that trademark. Well, yeah, and the only problem with that, something like that is I, they've tried to stop and start the NWO so many times. Um, I don't think the NWO has the same feel that it did um, even in 2001 when they brought it back a second time or a third time or however many times. It would be to me like bringing back DX. Um, it's had its time. It needs to go on. and uh, You can have a similar faction, but I don't think calling them NWO without those original three 
is 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 a right way to go with it. But I think there's an easy way to, to have it feature at least partly the original three. I mean, I, Scott Hall's be developing a better working relationship with WWE over the last couple of years. Kevin Nash has a relationship with WWE right now, and, and I think, you know, I, I think, I believe personally that Hulk Hogan will be back in WWE before the year ends. So I, I don't see any reason why, like, you know, at least Kevin Nash could not be like a manager or a spokesperson for a new NWO. Kind of like a J.J. Co- Dillon type thing. Yes, but, a, you know, a big, tall, <laughs> awesome version of J.J. Dillon. You know, the, funny, the um, funniest part and, of, oh, I should say a big, big sexy version of J.J. Dillon. The funniest part about uh, Kevin Nash coming back, I, and I think I said this to you a while ago, I mean, Scott Hall's not going to be. He is, um, his body is just so ravaged from the drug abuse and, and the, the hell he put his body through that I just don't know if he he could even make it on TV anymore. Hulk Hogan unfortunately has the the bad relationship and the bad press right now. Kevin Nash, it, it's funny to me that Kevin Nash is the one guy that still has a good relationship with Vince. When you consider in every promotion Kevin Nash was in, whether it was WCW or TNA, all he did was trash Vince and trash the the WWE. So for him to come back and and be able to have that that working relationship it's kind of a it makes me wonder about Vince because we've seen Vince hold a grudge before we've seen Vince not want to put over people that he hasn't personally made but then he also with the exception of Randy Savage um, he was always able to forgive and forget he did it with the Ultimate Warrior he's done it with Hogan more times than I can count He did it with Flair. He did it with um, so many other wrestlers throughout the years where you think they're gone for good, and then all of a sudden they're back. And it just, it's one of those things where I've just never understood about Vince um, and the way he runs his promotion. But having Kevin Nash be that that spokesperson is probably the only way. And I could could even see him being a spokesperson of Bullet Club, too, or Baylor Club, as they're, they're looking to call it. Uh, especially if they're going to go with the two sweet and the NWO uh, gang signs and all that stuff too, um, but I, I, I don't know. It's I just hope that screw it up with AJ Styles. I think if they can bring him in and have him be AJ Styles, I think they they struck gold. I think they've got a guy who I could see headlining WrestleMania. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to I don't want him to be called like the stylish Alan Jones or something like that. But, but yeah, I mean, the phenomenal AJ Styles being in WWE is something I, I've wanted to see for years, and I know that you have too. Um, as far as as far as the whole NWO Bullet Club slash Bauer Club thing goes, I just think that it would be so easy to sign Cody Hall once his contract expires with, with NJB, NJPW, who, for those who don't know, is the son of Scott Hall and looks a lot like him, has a finisher that is basically the razor's edge, and Even seems worse, like he has a lot retire. of his... He does, and he, he even seems like he has a lot of his dad in him. I mean, he he, he looks like a bigger, stronger version of his dad. Actually, what it looks like is if, is if um, his dad and, and, Ke- and Kevin Nash had had a child together. <laughs> uh, but I just think it would be so easy to have Scott, you know, Cody Hall kind of carry on that Hall tradition of being in the NWO, and then he kind of ousts, he kind of helps them oust Kevin Nash, and they just kind of take over the NWO. I mean, I think that's an, it's an easy thing to, to see, but either way, Regardless of what they call it, I think that'd be great if somehow they would use that stable to um, let Finn Balor ascend to the spot that John Cena was, by all accounts, supposed to have at WrestleMania and be the guy that faces The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. I think that would be a phenomenal match. Um, Balor, of course, you, it could be argued he's not really in a position to be facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania, but they've got a few months to build that up, especially if he's got a faction behind him. They could point out, point out that he's been the NXT champion for quite a while now and been defending it against all challengers and has been able to turn back all challengers. And we get to, we would get to see the demon versus the dead man. How awesome would that be? I think that would be fantastic. I, I, the, my only regard, the only thing that I hope doesn't happen is if they do go that route. I would rather, in all honesty, I would rather see maybe uh, Baylor Club, Bullet Club, uh, in two areas um, and have Finn Balor and maybe I would love to see the Young Bucks come in uh, maybe a, a, another member of either from NJPW or even somebody from uh, 
NXT to to join them and have them dominate NXT under Finn Balor and then have another faction with uh, Gallows and Anderson and anybody else that they can bring in um, behind AJ Styles on the main roster. So you could have Bullet Club dominating both things like they do with NJPW and Ring of Honor. Um, I think now is a good time for uh, Finn Balor to be NXT champion. I think NXT is becoming a thing of its own, and we talked about that in the last episode about how it kind of deserves to be a thing of its own. And then if you could do that and have AJ Styles, who I think, who in in a dream match for me, it would be AJ Styles winning the cha- winning the heavyweight championship at WrestleMania and maybe closing out the year with that. Uh, I think AJ Styles is is the kind of guy who can come in and be like Ric Flair was in 1992, 91 and 92, and walk in and win the title. I think he's that kind of well-known person. He's that kind of talent that he he is able to do that. Wow. Um, AJ Styles has shown the ability to change and adapt his both his ring style and his and his interview and promo style to basically any surrounding that he that he has. And it's interesting that you would put him in the same category as Ric Flair, not only because he's a multi-time world champion and um, the best wrestler in the world right now, or at least one of them, the way Flair was in 1991 when he came into WWE, but also the fact that for a while he was managed by Ric Flair. He came out wearing you know the Ric Flair type robes. He was the TNA champion. I, I can't remember, I don't think he called himself the Nature Boy, but I think it was heavily implied that he was the new Nature Boy no, in TNA. what they did is they formed their own version of the Horseman, uh, and I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember what it was, but him, uh, Beer Money, and uh, Kazarian um, had their own fortune. fortune, yeah, they had their own version of Horseman, uh, managed by Ric Flair, and then ended up turning on Ric Flair, but you're right, I mean, if you look back at, at AJ Styles and what he's been, um, he started air he was called air raid in wcw which was an embarrassment and then you had pointed out and i i didn't realize it but he had wrestled a couple matches with wwe and then he went to tna and he is the only grand slam champion tna has ever seen um multiple time world champion multiple time x uh, x division champion he put on some of the greatest matches in in TNA history when he was the, in the X division and then he moved in into uh, the heavyweight division after his little Christian coalition thing when, when you had Christian Cage come into WCW and I think, I mean, from 2002 to right now, I'd be very hard pressed to find anybody else in the world that is on par with him uh, as far as his ability to change with the times to go from faction to faction he was with uh, he was with Christian Cage and the Christian Coalition forever he was feuding against um, X Division people he was feuding against Jeff Jarrett and then he was thrown into the mix with Fortune and and that whole thing and then he went off and they they really destroyed him in TNA by having him do his whole lone wolf character as their knockoff on Sting from the from the um, late 90s WCW and then to go to NJPW and Ring of Honor I think outside of John Cena I don't know that there is another wrestler on the planet that could even come close to that level for the last decade yeah and, and he's actually done it without without any any hint of an ego either um, I think he knows how good he is, but at the same time, he's always willing to been, he's always been willing to just kind of sublimate himself to the demands of the story or the demands of the promotion. Um, you know, you know, the Christian Coalition was formed when the Christian Coalition was formed. AJ was already a multiple-time world champion in NWA and TNA. When you know, when he went over to, to New Japan, he actually, despite being the best wrestler in the stable, and I, I think we'll leave it now at two-time NW. NJPW world champion he was the second banana in that stable behind Carl Anderson um, of course he got his ass kicked by um, Kenny Omega his last day in the promotion um, he was willing to, willing to you know kind of be the number two guy in TNA for a while it was he, he just doesn't care as long as the story is right he will do his job to the best of his ability and I think that he'll he'll bring that same attitude in, into WWE, 
and I just, and, and you know and as a in addition to matches against Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins what the way you and I have talked about I would also love to see him have a great program against Chris Jericho at some point well that would be a dream match for me him and da- and also Daniel Bryan would be another dream match for me um, the thing I like probably the most about uh, AJ Styles is he's not only been able to adapt his character in his ring promotion or in his uh, promos but it, he's constantly bringing something new to the ring he tells great stories in the ring and when you watch a match of him it's fair say pretty safe to say that every single match he has you're going to see something you've never seen before and there's not too many wrestlers out there that can do that i if you want to do yourself a favor go to youtube and type in uh, aj styles best 25 moves and there is somebody put together a video of his best 25 of the uh, you know his top 25 moves by their um, their standards and it, it's watching that five minute video you're ju- I was just in awe at some of the stuff that this guy can do as to how talented he actually is well and he's got some of the of the greatest moves in wrestling I mean he's got the, he's got that great Pele kick that he pretty much invented um, he's got the best 450 in the business he has turned the flying forearm of Tito Santana into a top rope springboard move that looks like it could just kill somebody and of course he's got what many people consider legitimately to be the most dangerous move on the planet as to be his finisher and he's done a great job of kind of making it seem like he doesn't give a shit when he when he puts it on somebody that he that he can be breaking their neck and to see him off the second rope doing that too is to to realize that he's actually never hurt anybody with that move is just amazing well he has i mean but but really people have hurt themselves by moving their, their head in the wrong position you know, all you have to do is relax your neck and you're fine, but people kind of put their head out be, or tuck their head because that's what they're used to doing in other moves. You just don't do that in, in the Styles Clash. That's all. Right. Um, and, then, and, then he's, and then he's also got the, uh, the, the great variation on Jeff Hardy's Swanton, which is called the Spiral Tap, which he barely ever uses anymore. But, you know, he can... And then he's got... Then he's got one of the greatest submission holds in the history of professional wrestling also even though he's only been using it for about four or five years now and the calf killer which which you know i love the way he's adapted his style over the last you know six seven years to be a hybrid wrestler as opposed to being the high flyer he was in his early tna days he truly is a ring general nowadays and he deserves to have a high high profile match at his first you know, major WrestleMania in the company, whether that's this year or in, or at WrestleMania 33. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I can't agree a- anymore. I think, I, I, and if I had to say it, I think uh, probably my two favorite wrestlers over the last decade have been AJ Styles. I mean, he was the only reason I watched TNA in the beginning, uh, and then of course I, you know, I fell in love with other people that were there. You know, America's Most Wanted at the time was fantastic, and you had. Uh, have a low key. And, yeah, Triple X with low key and Christopher Daniels, and um, then you had uh, when Samoa Joe debuted as this unstoppable, unstoppable machine. And the, I, I might be the one of the few people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2002 to 2005, TNA was some of the best wrestling you'll ever see. Oh, exactly. And well, besides them and SmackDown, I thought SmackDown was doing very well that same that during that same time. But I mean, you also had, uh, which I think is one of the most underrated matches, is the King of the Mountain match, which I, I mean it. It has its qualms, but I I do really like the whole um, idea of getting a timeout, a two-minute timeout, and um, also having to pin an opponent to qualify to grab the title. I just I think the match could use a few tweaks, um, but I do think that's one of the most underrated type of matches there are. So TNA has done some good, uh, and AJ Styles was at the forefront of it, and but for him to be he has been one of my favorite wrestlers since the moment I saw him. The first time I saw him yeah. in the X Division, and along with him and Randy Orton, those were my two favorites for probably the last decade. I fucking love AJ Styles. <laughs> I really do. Um, I, I just wish that he had, that he hadn't had so. And, you know, in fact, I I don't think I stopped watching Tina on a regular basis until he left the promotion. That's how much I I adore his work. Is I just think he's he's awesome. Um, I don't. I'm not sure we're going to have time to run down. You know what we wanted to see at WrestleMania this year, but I'm just going to give it, give a quick rundown if you don't mind about what I what I would prefer to see. Yeah, we still got a few minutes. Uh, okay, so I, I already said I want to see Balor against the Undertaker. 
Um, I want to see Reigns against Triple H, not necessarily for the championship, but I do want to see that match. Um, if WWE had the guts to do it, I would love to. I would love, as I mentioned either earlier in this show or, or towards the end of last show, I can't remember which, um, to see a, a three stages of hell match between Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose. I don't think that they're going to have the guts to do that. So alternatively, I would like to see Kevin Owens take on The Rock and Dean Ambrose take on Brock Lesnar for the championship. I think it'd be awesome if Lesnar um, won the title at the Royal Rumble only to defend against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And then I would also like to see a triple threat TLC tag team title match between the New Day... Um, the Usos and the Dudley Boys. Oh, I was going to go uh, four-way with Lucha Dragons. No, the, not the Lucha Dragons because I don't know how long um, uh, Sin Cara is going to be out. But I would love to see. Um, but I think I think a match between Kalisto and Neville for the U.S. title would be something special. And then, of course, you know, of course, we're we're going to get, and we deserve to get Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the Divas Championship. Problem is, we're not going to get that um, for the Divas Championship because I just think that they're building more towards a Becky Lynch Charlotte, um, which I'm okay with. Well, that's happening. That's happening at the Royal Rumble. They don't. They don't. Doesn't need to carry on to the WrestleMania. It's, this is the WWE we're talking about. They're not going to. <laughs> in order for that to work with Sasha Banks. They would have to turn Sa Sasha Banks' face, and she hasn't had enough screen time lately. And when she has, she's been a full-blown heel. Uh, well, I, I actually love to grab Sasha Banks by the hair and turn her turn her face. And oh, I'm sorry. Wait, that's my dream. Never mind. Well, I I would I would love to see that. I would love to see Sasha, Sasha Banks. You'd love to see you'd love to see me grab Sasha Banks by the hair and turn her face to me. Yeah, I I appreciate I that, Jeff. Not, I, I mean, thank I, you, sir. I've thank seen you. Seen you in person. Um, so no. Um, but I would, I mean, I would, Ouch! <laughs> I would love to see maybe a triple threat match between Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte. Um, I would love to see, like you'd said, the three stages of hell um, with Kevin Owens and um, and uh, and Dean, Dean Ambrose. Ambrose. But my twist on that is, I would love to see that as a champion versus champion match um, with Kevin Owens as the heavyweight champ and. Um, Dean Ambrose is the Intercontinental Champ. I would love to see that. So would it be title for title then, or just champion versus I champ? I think I mean, title would only for be, title. Would only... Okay, okay. Um, I, I think to, a lot like what happened with uh, Ultimate Warrior uh, and Hogan, uh, like what happened with John Cena and, and Seth Rollins. I think title for title. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't care, I don't care what you say to this. Uh, under Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania Six was one of the best wrestlers of all. Oh, I and I'm right there with you because at that time, I mean, that that was one of my, that was I was around, right about in that time frame where I was getting sick of Hulk Hogan. Um, my guy was Randy Savage, but he was never getting love, and I was all in on Ultimate Warrior. So that that held a special spot in my heart too. But another thing that I would like to see, and um, this one might be a little far fetched, but I would absolutely love the. The, the way that they would mesh would be Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Oh, man. Wow. Um, to quote Jay from Jay and Son of Love Strikes Back, dude, I think I just filled the cup. <laughs> I think that would be... Because we've been, we've been wanting Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar for uh, years. And I think AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar would be the closest thing we'd get to it. Okay, so... so uh, We've only got a couple of minutes left, obviously, because the timer just went off. But um, I, I assume that you're that you're still that you would still want to see Reigns versus Triple H, just not for the championship. Yeah. It, and, and and what about where would you, where would you put the Rock then? I would put the Rock um, as a guest on there. I don't want to see him in the ring. I just I I've I've seen the Rock more times than I care to over the last couple of years in the ring. He was never a great wrestler to begin with. Um, he was more of a show. Oh, uh, he, he was more of a showman. I, I think maybe if we're going to do any kind of rock match, I think rock versus Jericho um, for kind of a um, callback match to the late 90s, early 2000s. I think that might be the way to go with it. I, I still can't believe you just said the rock was never a great, he, was, great he was a good wrestler. He could tell a story, but he was. 
you obviously never saw some of his matches. Well, folks, that's all we got. We'll try to do better next I time. I did. I saw Rock Bottom. I saw a People's Elbow. Fade to Black Kids. <laughs>